I'm Izzy Miller, and today we're going to be talking about hashes, why they're so cool, and why the answer to have you tried rubbing a hash on it is actually probably yes, even if you didn't think so. So what's a hash? Not hash brownies. If we had time, I'd actually play this video from Eurotrip, which is my favorite movie, but it's a lightning talk, so we're cracking onwards. We're talking about hash functions, which are functions that take an input and produce a uniformly distributed value of fixed size. Uniformly distributed basically means random, and fixed size means no matter how big this input gets, the output is always gonna be exactly the same length. If you wanna see a visual explanation of this, check out this website. It's really, really cool. It gives you a peek into the curtain of a complex hashing algorithm. The place where you probably bump into hashes most often is in hash tables, which are a key value store that takes the key, like this first name, and maps it through a hash function to get a really small fixed size hash that can be used as a key to look up the value, in this case, a phone number. And this means you can store less data and you can just insert stuff willy nilly without having to sort the data set because you're not relying on the numeric index, you're actually looking at the hash of the value. This is how Python dicts work, JavaScript objects, a ton of other stuff. And it's really, really fast, like theoretically constant time, but really actually more like linear time because of collisions and other mathematical weird stuff, but it's still really fast. And because it's so fast is how a lot of SQL queries actually work. If you're joining data together, depending on what the tables look like, you might be doing a hash join where it takes one table, turns it into a hash table, and then iterates through the other table doing that hash lookup, which as we just learned is really, really quick to get those matches. It's also how SQL group buys and aggregates work, where you take a hash table, you split it up into buckets based on that hash, apply your operator, and then you recombine and reduce the data set. This image is actually from Vicky's blog where she has a whole post about how cool this pattern is. But none of this is like, my mind is blown, right? So let's blow our minds. Symmetric aggregation is a hash-based pattern by the Looker founder. Um, and basically it solves the problem of SQL fan out where we have orders, we sum them up and get 124 bucks. We have an order items table that goes with it. But if we join these two together, all of a sudden we get repeated rows where order one has multiple rows, order two has multiple rows. And so if we sum up this total column, then we're getting repeated rows and we're fanning out this data, getting an inflated sum. Symmetric aggregation solves this with some crazy ass SQL. You look at this and you're like, oh my God, what? but it's actually not that complicated. Let's check it out. So we take our columns with repeated rows. We hash the primary key into a huge random number. Then we take the sum distinct of the hash plus the total for each row minus the sum distinct of the hash. And basically this properly aggregates the data and then the hashes cancel each other out and we're left with that correct $125 result. And you can try this out, it really works. But you're probably thinking, why did we need a hash? Why can't I just do the sum distinct of order ID plus total? And the answer is that unless you're positive that there are no collisions in your data, it won't work, right? So I've just changed this data set to prove a point. And now every single row's order ID plus total all equal the same number. So doing a sum distinct order ID plus total just won't work. So the hash is relied upon to create this big, unique number that won't cause a collision with other rows in the data set. Hyperloglog -log is an even cooler algorithm used to calculate the cardinality of a data set. Cardinality is just the number of unique items in a data set. So even though there are a bunch of cardinals here, the cardinality of these cardinals is actually just one because they're the same cardinal. This is really easy to do on small data sets. You just do a count distinct, it's fast, yay. But on huge data sets, this actually gets really, really slow and has a really high memory footprint. And Hyperloglog -log uses crazy probabilistic hashing stuff to do this without actually counting up every single row. It's actually really simple if you understand words like substream and harmonic and observable. So let's just crack into it. We're gonna count video IDs. Of course, the first thing we're gonna do is hash them. Then we're gonna convert it into binary. And we take the first four digits of this binary number as a bucket ID, and we'll just take it back into decimal for simplicity. And then we count the longest stretch of rightmost zeros in the hash. And the premise is that this is unlikely to be very long, just probabilistically. And so if you see a bunch of really long ones, then you probably have a huge data set for that to happen statistically. So we keep that number, add one so that none are zero. And then we do this weird math formula where we take a magic constant, multiply it by the number of buckets times the number of buckets over the harmonic mean of that longest stretch of zeros. And this gives us the cardinality. Here we got eight, it's actually nine, which is pretty good, but it works best on really, really, really big numbers like this data set with four billion rows. 
And doing this in BigQuery with account distinct takes 17 seconds or eight and a half hours of slot time and moves around 70 gigabytes. But using an approx count distinct based on hyperlog log only takes nine seconds or four and a half hours of slot time and only touches a gigabyte or so. And it only has 0.56% error, which is way more than enough for most applications. Hashes are also really great for crypto. So you can use them to build scalable blockchain. <laughs>